Hey, what's up you guys? It is Shox back with more Kana videos. This time we'll be doing a VOD review of my own, explaining more of a thought process behind my positioning and yeah, pretty much like my decision making because it's hard to do those while I'm in game. So hopefully this will give you guys more of an uh, insight to what I'm doing. Um, rather than just seeing it, I guess. And yeah, it's going to be a lot more detailed than just me playing the game, which is why I decided to do this. So um, let's just get right into it. We're against Akali. Took a last stand because I'm looking to go for the last stand will give you the opportunity of winning the skirmish in the early game because it just provides more damage. That's just a fact. Unless you like use your burst first. Then you'll not do damage, but if you can save burst until later, your combos, then you will definitely do a lot more damage with last stand. So the game starts right, and I'm trying to keep the lane to, or at least I'm trying to get the wave to on my side because I can't kill Akali on the tower or even poke Akali on the tower. So, in order for me to actually poke her under the, you know, trade with her, is if she's stepping further away from her tower, which is like closer to my tower, right? So, this wave is gonna push into me. You're gonna see me trying to bait out her Q with my W. You know, just like walking up and just Wing. And yeah, it's just like I got my wave under my tower, feeling good. Here I realized that my smart gas is not on, so I'm gonna turn that on. And yeah, the wave is on my side, or a little closer to my side, right? And then when I'm looking for pokes, I'm getting her bone plating off. When I did a tab before, I saw that she had bone plating, or she had resolve secondary, which most of the time they take bone plating, so. Very important to check for that stuff. So since she doesn't have bone plating, I have pretty much power over her right now. I go in for the trade after seeing her miss. That um miss that Q. So I'm taking on the trade opportunity. And I'm stacking up a wave, so I can use this wave to roam to bot side. And help secure the scuttle or whatever it may be. And now I see Zin, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna help Zin. I'm gonna help Mundo out. So I'm gonna path bot. And Mundo heads just straight to the bottom. And it allows him to straight, head straight to the bottom because I'm also here. But Zin's gonna come on me. He flashes, so I just have to flash. And I'm just like juggling. Juggling the Zin back and forth. We did get the two kills, which is very good. So, and now we're just thinking like we can probably kill this guy. Because Akali is freezing mid lane. She tried to freeze the mid lane when I went for the roam. And then she goes in. I guess she thought that um, I was not here, so she's just gonna end up dying. And we have to get out ASAP because we see Thresh. That means that Phyllis is nearby, so. But then we have Zix pinging that we want to fight this, and we end up getting absolutely wiped. Might as well play with the team, right? Follow the leader, Zix. But um, that was definitely not the good play. That was not the right play. Now we know, because everybody made the same call. If only one person made the call and then everybody did separate things, maybe he can say like, oh my god, you should have fought. But since he's stuck with his call, he can't really say much other than saying that his call was bad, right? And he learned from it, so. Okay, I'm just gonna fast forward because after this, I'm just letting the Akali like, pushing to me because I can't really do much with support being there. So I noticed that Akali's gone. 
which is why I start pushing because I see a pink ward that I want to get. And then if I don't shove right now, I'm never going to get this pink ward. So I'm going to shove so that Kali has to be staying for the wave while I get this pink ward for free. And I see her, she's trying to freeze. So I'm going to go back to the lane later. But I'm checking for any other wards before I go back. So there isn't, so I'm going to get back to the lane. And make sure I ward that bush so I don't get ganked. She comes, so I'm just going to auto in the EQ out for that electric Q proc and damage. And I can see my Mundo is doing dragons, so I'm like, okay. I'm going to just shove this and then path towards bot side. And I also see bot lane fighting, so I was like, okay. Um, Ziggs is 1 HP, they survived, is neutral. Mundo is doing dragon, but... If all three of them come, it could be dangerous, so I was like, okay, let's probably just tap that and then help him. So these are the things I'm trying to do with the prio I have mid lane. I'm not just wasting my prio, I'm not shoving randomly, I'm not, you know, doing anything random just for the heck of it. Gotta plan all these things out. Always grab grass and stand towards the edge. And I'm trying to waste her. I'm trying to make her waste her mana, and I have to be really careful that she doesn't ult me when I don't have my grass form. That's gonna make a really easy target for me, for her. Here I'm gonna go for the EQ trade because I see opportunity. Bonlin's already dead, so there's no point of me shoving this out. So here I'm gonna decide to freeze because this is gonna put Akali in a interesting position. Gonna go in for the trade, but I'm gonna dodge out that E. Zin is, I'm guessing Zin is somewhere nearby, so I am not going on her right now. Here I look at opportunity and then I see Thresh. I'm like, okay, never mind. It's time to back out. But if Thresh wasn't there, I could have done the EQ. I have barely enough mana if I just wait a little, if you look. My E is 75, EQ combo is 75, and after this wave, if Thresh wasn't here, I'll be here, and then just EQ Ignite, and then she dies, but... Just playing with fire right now, but Thresh is here, so she's gonna get the shove out, which is why I decided to stay. And... You know, just watch. Nothing else really happens after. Kali just makes it out alive. And the bot lane's getting ganked again. I'm like, oh boy. Aphelios is super fed. And then I see that Mundo got topside jungle and the Rift Herald. So this is super good. Wow, well, bot lane nice. And then the reason why I didn't touch the mid lane right there is because if I touch the mid lane, I'm not going to be able to shove it fast enough. Or uh, maybe I can, but it's just like risking myself that I'm going to die. So I might as well just, because there's no other items that I can get, like, maybe, yeah, there's literally nothing I can get, maybe a pink ward for pushing this wave, so it's no point. So I'm just going to take, take this reset so I can get into the map faster. Make sure to pop that bone plating. Always pop the bone plating before you try to all in. Bone playing is like super, super good against all ins. Kali was able to get the shove because obviously she backed first. And I'm not walking down because I don't know where the enemy team is. And then they could have this place warded. So I'm like, okay, if I walk down, I'm going to get Thresh hooked or Akali eat or, you know, whatever. Whatever it might be. And also, the game state is really bad right now. Our bot lane is like feeding. Their affiliates are super fed, and then we're just like kind of even in the mid lane. So I see two of them, three, three v three on the bot lane. So I'm like, okay, this has to be an opportunity for me soon. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. There's three v three going on the bottom, and then I was like, oh, never mind, Zin is here. I'm just gonna have to go even again and wait for Zin to pop up. So just going back and forth. Try to keep Zin here, but you're gonna see later. Yeah, Zin goes bot. So this is where I go, like, okay, Zin is bot lane, and the game cannot go on like this. So I look for all in. 
flash auto to get a bit of damage and get the kill. Aonia also went in because um, she used a lot of her Q. So she's not going to have enough energy to fight back. But yeah, it's just uh, looking for those kill opportunities and why you do it. I mean, obviously, even if they were... Like, even if we were even, I'd probably still go for that kill. Because it's just such a good opportunity for me. Akali has no energy and um, I have all my stuff up. But it's also just the fact that you're looking for these things, right? There's a reasoning why you're looking for these things. You see Zin bought 3v3, Volibear top, it's a 1v1 in the mid lane, the game. You want to be ahead, or you want to be ahead of Akali at least, so it's at least fair for the bot lane. At least have someone to neutralize the threat. Alright, so popping that bone plating, we're just gonna skip ahead to around here. Okay, so I saw a Kali path towards bot side. I was like, okay, I I see Zix teeping as well. I'm like, okay, I really need to go like save the oh, Zix for teeping. So I'm gonna stay here. And then Thresh pings. And this is very important. So, Thresh. I'm waiting for Thresh's flay because that's the only thing that can interrupt my E. So, I can like do a combo on Aphelios. So, I'm waiting for Thresh E, which is important. So, you, so there's the Thresh E. Next step is to position yourself. I You see me walking behind the Thresh. If I E now, I'll be going through this way. So, I'll, I'll wait a little bit more. And I see a perfect opportunity right here. So this is where I go in with ER or Prowler's R, much safer option because if I do ER, this guy could have like um, hooked me midair, but I go Prowler's and then R so I can position myself better and then grab this kill. At least Ziggs got it, but I'm going to die for it, but this is super worth because when you're behind, gold is so much more valuable. Trading 1 to 1 gold is so much more valuable. So here I just grab boots and then Viego's going to clean that up. And top lane gets a lot. So I'm going to go path back to mid because Viego's going back to top. And Dragon's up so and then now it's gone. So I was going to be like we're gonna try to set up for dragon, but not fight until my ult is up. But enemy team capitalized that pretty well. That don't have ult. Actually, we're probably gonna go back just in case you don't know what combo I use. It's pretty. It's like E, and the prowlers R Q, and the W auto Q. So that's a combo you can do. Okay. Also here. Just standing out of vision. That's just super important for Kiana to do. Standing out of vision. I'm letting the Mundo walk up. Go invade. But if I, as long as I'm staying out of vision. Their Akali cannot go on Mundo. You see how just Mundo just cleans that up. And I see an opportunity to go in. Here. So I do take the chance and just go in. So the only reason why I went in is because their bot lane was still bot lane. So that's one thing to one less thing to worry about. And there's just a kill opportunity for me. Like an angle. So what I do before the Prowless Claw, if I could use Prowless Claw on the minion, I would Prowless Claw here and then EQR. But obviously that's not the case. So the combo that you do now, you could do this before the update. So like, it's just like a up, like um, combo that you use a lot more often, which is E to the minion, get close, get as closest to the minion, so that you can like dash through the target even further. Because if I just E from here to here, it's gonna be so far away from Akali. So I'm gonna get cl as close to this um, minion. 
And I'm gonna cast Q midair. I do end up missing, but then what's important is that I'm using this Q cast because I'm gonna W forward anyway, so I can get into range to alt and prowlers. So even if this miss, it's just an extra bit of damage that I'm gonna be missing, so I don't really mind too much. But the most important thing is like I'm canceling my animation, my cast time on my Q. Um, yeah, so Q has a cast time, right? I'm canceling that uh, Q cast time with my dash duration. So by the end of my dash, my Q is going to be finished casting so I can press W to keep moving forward like this. And then after W, I just press R and then Prowlers of course and then there's a bread and butter combo. So that's a kill opportunity you can look with Prowler's Claw. Oh, here I see my top lane wants to fight, so I'm like, okay, I'm gonna shove this and then go top. But then I look over and then Zin is already 1 HP, so... Decided to back because I don't see their bot lane. But then I'm like, okay, they're probably not coming mid because I've been missing, so they're probably going like... Somewhere bot again or take a reset. I mean, I'll see them with like these wards, so... And then yeah, they're, they didn't come, so I get to shove this and chip the tower and chipping the tower is pretty good because as Kiana you need that mid tower down if you want to look for more flank opportunities if that mid tower is standing you're not going to be able to siege you're not going to be able to look for like kill opportunities as often by the way I'm not going mirror mana a lot of the times now because I just find value in Serpent's Fang item and Last Whisper because they stack armor most of the time so I just see a lot more value in that, so here Zix goes mid lane. So I just give him mid lane. It's just so much safer for Zix to farm mid. And here I'm just clearing ward and I don't see them, so just playing it safe. Literally they could be anywhere. So Akali does show up and I'm just waiting. Be patient. If you die here, it's gonna be a disaster. So even in top lane there's nobody showing, so I'm pretty sure on the medium map somewhere, they were definitely like hanging around somewhere here. And right here, I see my team is fighting and I'm like, okay, at this point, if my team gets wiped out here, this is game over. This is game over before I can even play the game. So I just start booking it because I have tier 2 boots. And I look for opportunities and I see opportunity to E flash R. Or E R flash, I guess. And then we grab the kill onto the Filios, which is the most important part. And this is the part where Viego becomes Viego. And yeah, so we missed like a whole wave bot lane, but this is a fight that we couldn't ever lose. And it was gonna happen, so that's the. That's my. That's my cue to go in, because if he loses, it's a game over, so. You get mid tower, and then I'm gonna fix bot lane before this dragon timer. So I go bot. Here, what I would like is to have Viego actually take a reset and then just take dragon and then do other stuff, but Viego walks top. And then I'll, s you'll know. You'll see why that's a problem, that Vigo's just top right now. Zin is top, so we're like, okay, we gotta push mid in, and then we're gonna pressure bot with uh, Zin being top. So that is exactly what we start doing. Mundo starts coming bot lane because they know since Zin is top, it's gonna be a 3v4 in the bot lane if they do come. But we see Ophelia's mid, so it's like, this is so free. But then Akali just runs and they realize, like, okay, we can't catch. Although she comes back in and grab a free kill. And she R threw my stun, by the way. That was so weird. But here's another important thing. I'm just pressing back. I'm, I'm pressing back ASAP. Like, I'm not wasting any time just going, oh, should I go? Should I not? Or should I stay? You know, that indecisiveness is going to ruin you. It's going to lose your games. Because now, since I backed on the spot right after, I'm able to just get back onto the map pretty relatively quickly. 
And if Diego's just here, instead of like taking top farm for no reason, we should be able to just take this dragon, which is annoying, but whatever. It's solo queue, happens. So they're already pretty much done doing dragon because Viego comes in really late. And I'm using grass because I don't have ult. But I do see an uh, opportunity to go on Ophelia's, so I decide to go on him. And Kiana not having ult, you gotta look for opportunities by just um try the EQ with the regular Q and then WQ. I tried to get the rocks so I can one shot her, but misplay on my part. But yeah. Kiana without ultimate, you wanna always pressure with the grass so that you can always um, look for opportunities to get onto their ADC or something. Because the ADC enemy carries can't focus. Like, if I'm stealth, this is really important stuff. It really confuses the enemy players. If I'm stealth, this Foley Bear has to, like, he's confused if he should just go towards bot and ignore me or if he just should stand here and then try to, like, zone me away. This. He decides to zone me away, and then here I'm. J I can decide either to get out if this doesn't look good, or I can decide to go back in if it does look good. And then here I decide to go back in because it looks good. And we get the kill. Ophelius fails to grab the Ophelius, but it's fine. And yeah, rest of this happens. Go for the chase. Always going in grass queue and I'm like okay that red buff healed her way too much so I just decided to back off. And this these are just two free kills, so I just go in and I'm like what the hell did Zin just heal off of? <laughs> that was actually so BS. I should have killed Zin Zin before she he got the Gorjinker, but that just ends up costing us lives because Zin lift for so long. Okay, so now we're pushing the mid lane because that's gonna give us a lot of vision. And you know, vision is very important. And with this vision, we can work on, with this mid wave, we can work on vision on the top side and fix the wave top. Oh, there's like a Hold on. Okay, there we go. I fixed it. Yeah. Vigo spot. You can't really pressure Baron because our champions are really bad at Baron. So. Like, Vigo dying here. Just not really optimal. And for some reason, I don't know why my Zix went bot lane, but it's all okay. We're just going to focus on what I do, right? Not everything can go perfect. I see Zin here, so I'm like stalling for a little bit. And then I'm gonna ult. To grab a free kill. And I see my whole team has died, so I was like, okay. Just gonna take a reset then. Get back onto the map. The reason why I didn't try to set up a death push is that if I if we die, that's burn, so. It's better for me to just take a reset and play safe. I wish I went for the um instead of a uh, lethality Saturday Dirk. I wish I went for Last Whisper quicker, but I left the base before I can refund. But yeah, they have so much armor. So at this point, I'm like, oh great, the only person I can really kill is Ophelios, which is what I'm gonna try to focus to do every time. Okay, so dragon's coming up soon, which is why I decided to go top. I see Alfeli is pushing up way too far. I told him to back, which he does, and I'm pushing one more, so that we can have a we can build a wave while we're just like going back and forth. Because now with this top wave, what we can do is just like juggle back and forth. Look for opportunities because right now they're on a they're on a short time like because they have to make a play or else the top wave is gonna be too much for the top tower. So right now they're forcing dragon 
on spawn. And right now, this is important. So why am I not positioning myself with the team? Because that's going to make it way too easy for them to peel me off. So I'm always looking for opportunities to be on the side. So Ophelios and all the enemy team have to focus on what's going on here and what's going on here. So I'm always looking for this flank opportunity, which is why you'll see me trying to enter from here. But Zin is doing a really good job of uh, trying to stop. Like this Zin is playing it really, really correct. Trying to stop me, but I'm still approaching slowly with the grass. And then right here, I see opportunity to go in. And you'll see. Go in. No hesitation. But could not get a kill, but we chunked them a lot and isolated the Zin. So I die here, but I basically did a lot of work there. Here we trade one for one. Surprisingly enough, the um, fight is pretty close, but we'll be able to get the dragon here. Oh my god, Karma just got one shot. I feel like this is gonna die. Unless... Here, yeah, this is where I buy Last Whisper. Yeah, I feel like they both die. Which is really bad because now they're on the timer for Baron and... As you know, Ophelius is a pretty good champion to do Baron with. Especially the fact that he's just super fed. Look at that heal, Jesus. So I'm not even going to try to do anything, I'm just going to let them take Baron here, just push mid lane. I tried to go for it, but then Akali lands a E while I'm not looking, and then this is where I just die. Nothing I can do. And Ziggs is just super tilted right now. So this is where we throw out the first FF vote. I think it's first, right? Yeah. First FF vote of the game. The Ziggs is just so tilted. And yeah, I'm just questioning why. I'm just curious why Aphelios, I mean, not Aphelios, the Viego went top after the Viego Penta kill on Dragon Timer. But we're just gonna keep playing the game. Trying to win the game, actually focus on the game, how to win. And right now, I'll position myself on the side always, because what am I going to do in the mid lane, right? See Volibear coming, I can't really just step up to him, so... I can't really prevent him from getting to Ziggs, which is why I think Ziggs should have... Honestly, just should have gave the mid tower. And I think Karma should have, um... Yeah, the Karma just didn't even try to W the Volibear. So... Zix is gonna die. We have no wave clear with Zig without Zig, so this is so bad. And then we're like at this point it's super over, but this is where the enemy team makes a mistake. Where Thresh goes in. And this is such a good fight because I failed this is super far, so I'm able to do free damage onto the Akali, which I capitalized that on. Get an alt angle, so. But yeah. Make sure you look for those mistakes. You gotta capitalize on the mistakes. And Thresh just straight up get deleted there. Don't even know how they landed. And we're just going for more now. Let's see what we can. On I shouldn't have died here. I guess I was just cocky. And Aphelius does finally end up going down. But yeah, that was a huge fight for us. Capitalize on the mistakes of Thresh going in. Because Thresh going in like that, some people can follow up, but Aphelius can't. And Aphelius is their team, so. Oh, this is so huge. This is right before the Infernal Soul, by the way, so. More mistake. 
from the enemy team, just capitalizing on it. But yeah, this is, don't get me wrong, this is definitely a lucky game in that sort of sense. But I guess you can say that we got unlucky by getting this bot lane in our team, so... Guess it evens out, but finally get the Infernal Dragon, and after the Infernal Dragon, I'm looking for opportunities. So I actually saw um, Ophelius catch mid lane, yeah, right here. So I'm like, okay, where's Ophelius is gonna go? Probably top side jungle, and then probably go mid. So I'm just waiting and the timing where Ophelius is gonna be. So this is where I jump, and then here's the moment where. I jump and then be like, okay, if he's not there, I'll back off. But then if he's there, I have to react fast before he reacts and then just like predict my movements. So I just flash him Im immediately. And honestly, here I thought I had ultimate, which is very unfortunate. It happens, but I don't have ultimate, so I quickly use Prowless Claw because that's the other gap closing tool I have. So. He's probably his claw, but I still get one shot. So, um, yeah, that didn't work out, but it doesn't really matter because there's nothing on the map, so they're not gonna get anything off of my death. Here, Vigo's gonna die. And we're back into the map. See Baron coming up. And it's a 4v5, so we don't wanna fight, but we still don't wanna give them free mid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep using grass to look for opportunities. So if they do step up too far, I'm going to ult the Ophelius and kill Ophelius. And what's really important, what I'm doing is I am keep using grass. I keep spamming grass, but I'm standing over here. Because if I'm standing here, that's a really bad position for me to be in after the stealth goes away. So I'm always standing here, but I'm throwing out the grass just in case like... There's an opportunity where Ophelius shows up here and I can look to like ult him if he disrespects me but he's probably like standing all the way back there because he knows I can like kill him so. Always just throw out those grass and then stand on the edge behind. So here I'm looking for flank angles and Viego's bot which doesn't make any sense. So now this is just like a go button for uh, enemy team. As you can see, they'll probably go in. Yeah, Akali just goes in because Vehicle's not there from the beginning. And this Zin is playing so well. Just keeping me on the flank angle. Even in the dragon fight and this fight, he is just blocking my flank angle. And here I'm like, okay, it's probably game over, but we'll just hope that they chase the moon though, and they actually do chase the moon though, instead of going for the end. So the game is once again saved. And we have Infernal Soul, so it's not too bad. Here I decide to go edge not edge of night, but Yumu's because from here I noticed that if bad fights happen like this again where someone's gonna get caught, they're just gonna press R, just engage on us while Diego's like on the other world, other side of the map and then I'm like trying to look for a flank position and I'm gonna be far. I wanna be I wanna be there ASAP, so that's why I get the Yumus. Because Edge of Night is not gonna do anything against the team. I have like nothing that really blocks anything important. Here we're just standing safe because if I go top they can just shove by and then end so Here again, you'll see me use my grass to check for vision. I'm like a moving ward. I'm checking where Ophelius is. If he steps too far, I go on him. If he doesn't, then I just simply back off. Grab another grass. I'm standing here thinking about jumping this wall with the Q. If Ophelius decided to randomly walk this way, but he doesn't, so. And now it's just stable. Always staying out of vision. That's that's that makes 
it really hard for enemy team to play. And I see Elder coming up soon, so I'm like... And I also see that we have no reduced healing other than Mundo, so I'm gonna get Executioners for the last fight. Because Elder is a powerful buff. Here, I, I see that shield and I'm like, okay, I'm not even getting close. I'm not even gonna bother getting close to that. And... This is where the fight starts to begin. And notice how I position myself. I always never walk with my team. That is really bad for Kiana. The Kiana is a champion that you have to play around making confusion on the enemy team. In this case, I'm gonna start going from bot, so Felix has to focus on me. And if he doesn't focus on me, then I'll be getting a free flank. And if he does focus on me, then my team can like start fighting freely because of at least can't really like walk up too close but I'm as you can see I'm approaching the way with grass element always with grass element because of is the auto attack champion right but then here I see of is like pretty close to this wall and he's kind of focused on this fight right now so I'm like okay this is my time to go so I pop my Yumu's W and the R flash prowls onto the Ophelius and the EQ to finish him off and that alone basically won the fight. Because Aphelios is dead, all of them is literally half HP or even below half HP. So, this is pretty much Elder for us. And that's basically my carry. Things you just gotta do with Kiana. Just looking for those um, opportunities and positioning is very important, so... Here we're just trying to end the game, but well, we couldn't. I don't know why we couldn't end the game, but Ziggs die. So you know, living up to his name, or not living up to his name. He's not being a good boy. He's being a bad boy right now. All right here, we're just gonna grab a kill and just back, because if we die here, it's game over. So we're just like, okay, no reason to try to go for anything more, because I burned my ultimate on Volibear. I really didn't want Volibear to ult and then come back, so I just ulted. So we're just gonna take blue and stuff. We're gonna push mid, and the reasoning is to use these two minions as a uh, vision, basically. <laughs> so now we see Ophelis is here, and then I'm walking up here so that Karma can like clear some words, walk up. And you'll see me keep using grass, walk up a little bit to see what's going on. I don't see any affiliates, so I just back out again, grab on the grass. Here I want my team to fight in Baron. I'm telling my team to fight around Baron because that's just a place for me to... Because fighting mid lane is super hard for me other than fighting in Baron. There's so many walls. I can just... So many walls in... Um, yeah. It's just so much better. But my vehicle just goes in here. I'm like, oh crap. This is not looking good. But keep in mind, I have grass form, okay? And I always just carry grass. Because then I'll be... And I'm also not approaching from my just mid lane in general. I'm approaching from the top where it's going to confuse... Whether for them to look over here or look over there, because you know, League of Legends screen can only capture the few. So right now they're focused here, so it's really hard for them to catch this. Or if they are catching onto this, they're probably gonna be playing super safe while like all of my team is just fighting them three, and then these two will be zoned or something. So this is just a nice angle for me to go in, and then Aphelios just doesn't respect me, so I was like, okay, then I guess you'll pay for it, which is why I go in, get that kill. And as you can see, that is how we're gonna end the game. And yeah, hopefully um you guys enjoyed this VOD review. If you did, leave a thumbs up and then let me know if there's any more questions. If I missed something, I'll try to answer. And also please let me know if um you guys like this style of VOD where I'm just explaining my positioning and stuff. And yeah, um Hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I'll see you guys on the next video.
Take it easy. Peace.